when folks get behind the wheel of a brand new Jeep, they usually aren't aware of all the built-in capabilities that it has to offer. Lockers, sway bars, high range and low range, all of this stuff is useful, but when and how should it be used? If you just use your Jeep for the daily grind, you're probably never going to need to press any of these candy-like buttons. Uh-oh, what do we have here? A random stranger in need of assistance. That appears to be a Rubicon. His struggle is really needless. He apparently has no idea of the capabilities that a Rubicon-equipped JK has to offer. Looks like you got yourself in quite the situation. Do you need some help? No, the stupid iPhone just got me lost, and I have 30 minutes to deliver my pizza. All right, now if I were to tell him that just with a simple press of a button it could solve all of his troubles, this already intense situation could escalate into a serious meltdown. What are you doing? Let's just take a second and get a little more familiar with your Jeep, shall we? My voice is my passport. Please verify me. Have you ever used your help system in your MyGig? 8675309. Welcome to the help section of the MyGig Entertainment and Navigation System. What, does this guy come with it? My name is Dr. Dennis Wood. How may I be of service to you? Dr. Wood, we have a new Jeeper here. He would like some information on open versus locked differentials. Dr. Wood, do you hear me? He's a very handsome fellow. Yeah, the mustache has that effect on people. So Five, oh, there you are. Six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Am I reaching? I can hear you now. Am I to understand you need some information on locking differentials? That's correct. Please select the information depth and intensity level. Boring, mind-numbingly dry, or the extremely informative just kill me now section. All right. We'll take boring. That'll be great. In an effort to provide a boring experience level, let's view an informative video. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Dr. Wood, here to explain the benefit and theory behind the locking differential. But before we begin, let's take a look at a very empowering video. Hello, I'm Dr. Wood. Locking differentials vary from open carrier differentials in several key areas. To help illustrate, let's take a look at this enlightening video. Hello, I'm Dr. Dennis Wood, here to explain the locking differential. But for a much more informed analysis of the locking differential, let's watch Dr. Dennis Wood eloquently explain the when, whys, and hows of the locker. We've chosen a basic no-frills four-door Jeep Wrangler to illustrate the functionality of the selectable locking differential. We're attempting to negotiate this series of obstacles in two-wheel drive. Plenty of flex helps maintain tire contact, but when one wheel finally loses traction, power is transferred to the path of least resistance and forward progress is halted. Witness the open differential. Two-wheel drive is in reality one-wheel drive. In the days before lockers, there was a time-tested technique that will sometimes yield just enough assistance to get you out of a bad situation. While maintaining throttle pressure, press and hold the park brake release button. Now sharply pull, then release the handbrake in rapid succession. For some reason, some of you will be much better at this than others. Fascinating. Notice the bouncing effect that the handbrake has on the tire desperately searching for power. The handbrake increases resistance on the spinning tire and forces power to the tire with traction, resulting in forward motion. This park brake technique is very similar to what your Jeep JK's BLD or brake lock differential system performs. Now that's informative. With the dawn of the locking differential, a new world of traction was opened. With the Jeep immobile and in two-wheel drive, we simply engaged the rear locker. Normally, we would need to be in low range and in four-wheel drive to engage the rear locker, but this Jeep has an ARB selectable locker that can be actuated at any time. This will help to illustrate locker function. If 
All lockers are so great, why don't all vehicles use them all the time? Consider both tires connected by a single solid axle shaft. The axles are locked together. In a tight turn, the inside tire wants to rotate much slower than the tire on the outside of the turn. But with the axle locked, both tires are forced to turn at the same speed. Something has to give. The result is a tire annihilating drag, accompanied by the associated barking and squealing of the inside tire. How did they correct that problem? The solution is the open differential. An open differential is designed to allow independent rotation of the tires. Inside the differential, power is transferred to the path of least resistance. This will often result in a one-wheel drive scenario. For example, if one tire is on solid rock and the other is in loose dirt, power is being transferred to the tire with the least amount of traction. In our tight turn scenario, power is being supplied only to the outside tire, while the inner tire free wheels or coasts. This allows the outer wheel to rotate much faster than the inner wheel, resulting in a smooth, non-tire wearing turn. Although having a locked rear end can in certain situations yield better results than even four-wheel drive, there are times when there is no substitute for four-wheel drive. In four-wheel drive with open differentials, power is supplied to both the front and the rear axle. Now remember, we have open differentials. So power is being supplied to the wheels with the least resistance. In four-wheel drive, that means two-wheel drive. One front and one rear. You know, it's amazing the kind of information we can get from this help screen. An open diff four-wheel drive is still a very effective off-road combination. With the right driver, a no-locker or open diff Jeep is still a very formidable machine. Let's attempt the same line on the same hill and see what effect front and rear lockers have on the Jeep. Both axles lock, we truly have four-wheel drive. All tires are turning at the same rate. This means 100% of the power is being supplied to the tires with traction. That sounds great, until you hear the sound of parts breaking. Be careful when you're locked up. Avoid bouncing and a heavy foot. Disengage the lockers when you don't need them. You'll actually be able to steer that way. I did not know that. Did you find this explanation helpful? You know, you're right. It does have striking features. Dr. Wood, are you still there? Did this thing just lock up? No. In fact, 8675309, I have considerably more information. No, 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 no. I think we understand. 8675309? Yes, Dennis. Will I dream? Of course you'll dream. All intelligent beings dream. Nobody knows why. But we gotta go now. Bye-bye. Now look, even though you're in four low, only two wheels are turning. That's the differential working, and it's the two tires with no traction. Okay, let's try out those lockers we learned about. To engage the lockers, shift the transfer case to low range. Then simply press the locker button twice and watch for the indicator on the dash. With the transmission in neutral, give the locker a second to fully engage. All right, it looks like we're good to go. Let's give it a try. Seriously, man. Hey, I'm new at this. Uh, I, yeah, uh, you can see that. <laughs> okay. You did it. Okay, let's turn the lockers off. This is gonna make the Jeep easier to steer and handle. Just leave the Jeep in low range until we get back to the road. All right, I think that leaves us enough time to get that pizza delivered. Oh, wait. We ate it!